everyone, Martin here. Today I'm so happy because I finally made some decisions regarding the marble droppers here. So I'm finally finished the design of all the droppers and before I talk about them I just want to show you this Marble Machine X CAD model made by the Elephant Eaters, the amazing CAD team from Discord. When I angle grind a part, that part disappears from this CAD model. It's an amazing team and the result are amazing. And I can now start to use this CAD model to make real design and engineering decisions. You can see the detailing is brilliant and you can also see that I'm not really friend with my 3D mouse just right yet. <laughs> Last episode I showed you the vibraphone gates and assembled on the machine they look like this. You have all these heads sticking up like a feeding brontosaurus in Jurassic Park. You can put small green leaves on these brass wheels. Uh, it's very early here, okay. Uh, you, have to, you have to bear with me today. When the vibraphone plays do 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 do, do, do. You will see these wheels moving. Click, 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 click. Awesome, right? I'm using the same gates over the drums. So here's the kick drum gate. To the left of it, we have the cymbal gate. And then we have the hi hat gate. And we have the snare drum gate. Yesterday, I ordered all the parts for all these gates. So all these parts that we're looking at on the screen right now is currently being manufactured by makers and manufacturers all over the world. That has taken me so much time to prepare all the files and most importantly to sign off on the decision. One of the toughest things for me in this whole process is to make final decisions and having to ship step files to manufacturers to make these parts forces me to sign off on a, on a design and that's just how it goes. Let's go over to the newest addition to the Marble Machine X family, the Cybergate. Drum roll. <laughs> this is something I am pretty proud of, I have to say. For the longest of time, I didn't think it was possible to drop eight marbles from eight points right next to each other. But guess what? We figured it out. The cool thing with this gate is that the dropping points are so close. So when the marbles are being dropped on uh, the cyber base, they're all coming from almost the same angle. So all eight dropping points hit the strings down here in the cyber base from kind of the same angle. What I did yesterday is that I also ordered all the parts for the cyber gate as well. So at the moment, all the parts for all the marble gates of the whole Marble Machine X is being manufactured. And oh wow, has there been a process to be able to sign off on all these design decisions. But I did it and I'm out of I'm out of that phase of the project. And now I can just eagerly await the parts and start to put them together and start again to make the marble tests and the reliability test with all these new marble gates as soon as the parts arrive to me. Last week I did the live stream when I designed this gate for the cyber base. By the end of the live stream I was like, I don't really feel it's that simple. All the action is hidden inside here. The marbles are separated. If you see there's a distance between them. You can't really see anything. You look at this from the outside and you see just uh, iron bars, right? It's not so interesting to look at and there was something feeling odd about it. So I scratched this whole design, as you do, and created this. There's more than meets the eye in this design, as always. A lot of people have pointed out that these Pac-Man gates can be used as the marble droppers themselves. Why do we even need this extra foot coming down and dropping the marbles when the Pac-Man gate itself can suffice? The argument I've seen is that if you just put this marble gate at the end of each channel, you can just have this dropping directly on the instruments. And as you can see here, it's a minimal amount of moving part. I'm just pressing this black thing with my hand and one marble falls out. This should be the ultimate simplicity for the marble machine next. However, making this solution would not make the music as tight. The window in which the marble can slip out from the gate is much larger and it's not controlled and it's slow. So we 
do not have accurate control over when the marble is released. We do have control over how it's released, but not perfectly timed when. So this is why I'm here attaching the extra arm below. The arm opens much faster than the Pac-Man gate. It will be a much more instantaneous marble drop. The arm also gives us control over the marble drop height and marble position. So the arm is crucial for this to become a music instrument that can play almost midi tight music. As you can see here in the old design, I had my Pac-Man gates and I had my dropper arms. And that's also true for the new design. As you can see here, the dropper arms are adjustable in height. I have 40 millimeters adjustability and the movement length is controlled by moving these links between all these holes, as you can see here. The further out we attach this link, the less this little gear will rotate. This little flower here that looks like a gear is actually not a gear. It only moves back and forward 12.5 degrees, turning this Pac-Man gate 25 degrees. There's a two to one gear ratio between these two moving parts. The reason I needed a gear ratio in this mechanical connection was because of the length that these links can move left and right and the speed which I wanted this dropper arm to open. We also needed to reverse the motion to make the gate open correctly while the Pac-Man gate closes. There's more than meets the eye always. Again, I've designed for silence. So down here you can see there's silicon tube and you can see how this dropper rests upon empty silicon tube. And that's also true up here. The blue field here, the back side of this pivoting arm is resting against silicon tube between these pegs here. There's no silicon tube in the CAD. And here you can really see how tight we managed to design this gate. So eight marbles comes in from this side and it's kind of uh, brilliant, <laughs> if I might say so myself. The only mechanical movement that feeds into this gate is these links going in and out, and that sparks this whole chain reaction of events. I'm so released that we found a solution for the Cyberbase. And I have to give shout outs to some ideas from Discord. In our Airtable database, the Idea Vault team have gathered all the ideas for different solutions in a super cool Kanban view. Here's just a folder of all the Pac-Man ideas and feedback. It's brilliant. So go check the Airtable view through Discord if you want to see all the brilliancy going on uh, on Discord. So from the Airtable you can click and you go directly to the post on Discord. It's pretty genius. This is a post by Yakov Gal and as you can see I've used exactly this principle. So you have a dropper arm and you have a gearing connection to a Pac-Man gate. The link in Yakovgal's design comes from the left in the image. If we zoom over to my view, you can see that the only difference is that my link comes from the right and that it sits underneath. So shout out to Yakovgal for this idea. So I'm in the Marble Gates channel here. I'm looking for a post from Lund. It's so much ideas and uh, brilliant discussions going on on Discord. I can't really get over it. This is a crazy, awesome design from Gonsonator. 
for another iteration of the Cyberbase Marble Gate. So this is important. Nothing is designed in a vacuum. So I designed the new Cyber Gates to fit on these red and green activation spots because I know I can get to those because that's how I did it in the earlier design. Here is the post by Lund. Inverted action gear for the back row. This simple sketch gave me the solution uh, for how to mirror the front row and use the same idea on the back row. So if I put Lund sketch to the left, you can kind of see how this uh, simple colorful sketch have become CAD on the right side on the screen. So thanks to everyone for being such amazing, good discussion partners on Discord. On the Wintergarten Discord server, there's a new rendering channel and I wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone who are making these amazing renders of the Marvel Machine X. Red and W, LabTech901, Cole and Jeepster made renders for the intro in this video. Head over to the rendering channel on Discord if you want to be part of making these CAD designs come to life like this. Thanks to everyone in the community for making these, they are so amazing. So most work I've did this week has been on emailing manufacturers and administration because ordering and procuring parts is such a big job. So when you see something in CAD, you think, oh yeah, now Martin can put that on the machine. No, I have to make it come real. So these are the POM parts for all the gates and they are going to be machined in Switzerland, which is super cool. I'm going to make these gates in stainless steel because it's easier to weld and it's non-magnetic. For all the gates, I'm laser cutting 300 stainless steel profiles in the Netherlands. I found a super nice supplier thanks to Rosero. I created a customer account and you can supply a step file and get a quote within minutes. They normally don't deliver to France, so we have to figure that out, but the steel profiles are ordered. And here are the axles. So this five millimeter axle that we need five of is for the cyber gate, and this four millimeter axle is for the escapement gate. And these are being cut by an old Marble Machine X superstar, Ace Crystal, that made the rubber wheels for the cyber base. So Ace is making these in the Netherlands, which is awesome. So here you can see the brass wheel in CAD and here is the real world already cut brass wheel. This has been water cut by Jeffer in Cleveland, Ohio. This looks awesome. I love the kind of brownish look of this brass. And if we zoom up a little bit, we see the clamps. I'm very happy with this design. The clamps that are going to attach the PMA pipes to the gate. And here are the aluminium parts made by RHDF in Sweden. It has this apple kind of finish and as you can see, they are gorgeous. I had to show you this. This week I have Olivier from ID Acoustic here and we're working on my studio installation again. And this is one of my two corner bass traps. In the middle hangs an active bass trap and top and below is two passive bass traps and look forward to episode three of the music studio installation next week. So it's been a really busy week working on the music studio installation plus the marble gates. This is turning out very, very cool indeed. So in summary, making these huge decisions and signing off on them is something that I'm really bad at. It takes me a lot of time. I want to look at all the possibilities and everything. And to have finally decided on all these marble gates and cracked the code for how to design them for this machine feels amazing. I can't believe that what should have been designed first has been designed last. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. I'm feeling super confident that the marble droppers and gates are not the bottlenecks they always wear on this project. And I'm, I'm gonna make a wow to everyone watching this video. I will officially accept defeat 
if these gates are not working. I don't mean like if I made something wrong in the order, if I have to order a new part or something like that, of course I would do that. But this is the last design I will do for the Marble Machine X. <laughs> I have a high belief in this design and most of all I'm feeling relieved that this long kind of redesign is finally over and very soon I will be able to go back to building videos where I assemble all these cool parts and most of all starts the reliability videos again with the marble test. I'm gonna make like one gate on the snare drum and I'm gonna like drop 100,000 marbles during like nine hours. <laughs> I want to do something like that. I just want to prove that we built something reliable and most of all resilient. Talking about resilient, thank you for staying with me in this crazy journey. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. You are awesome. Thanks for all the support through YouTube memberships and Patreon. That has been amazing to see that the more serious I've become in this project, the more I spend my time where I should, the more support I, I receive for the project. So sometimes when I stay more silent on the internet, it means that I'm focused working on the Marble Machine X. So this was a simple kind of weekly update. Now you know where we are. I'm working with the manufacturers to get all the parts to France. And yeah, I just wish you all a fantastic day. And I feel super happy about the future of the Marble Machine X. See you next time. Bye.